Growing up, I was told that something was wrong with me for as long as I can remember, that I'm socially impaired, that I'm different from other people, that I might not be able to leave home or go to college. And I'm here to tell you that I'm fine. <laughs> My diagnoses are not this dark secret I keep hidden. Um, and in all honesty, they are not relevant to my everyday life now that I've gotten the help that I need. Um, by utilizing the best of myself and creating an environment with friends and family that accept me for who I am, I've been able to do some amazing things. Speaking in front of the UN at their Convention of Biological Diversity was one of them after I won a research um, competition. I submitted a paper on coral reefs, and it ended up winning, which is awesome. And um, I had the opportunity to be published in Columbia University's Journal Consilience. And since then, um, I have been working at medical research labs, the Medical University of South Carolina, Tufts Medical School, and now the University of Vermont. So mental health issues um, have always been a problem for people because of the way they're viewed. Many people are hindered because they think they are not accepted from this world. And as a result, we have to hide. Many people don't know this, but moments before I was to go speak in front of the UN, I was emailing my doctors telling them how sad I felt and for no apparent reason. And in all honesty, it was frustrating because I couldn't tell anybody about it. What does it sound like if you call your friend saying, yeah, I'm about to speak in front of the UN and give a speech, and I feel depressed. It's just, <laughs> nobody, people would think I'm an ungrateful diva. Like that's, so, but unfortunately, um, in terms of talking about what people go through, we all have our problems, regardless of whether there's a diagnosis for it or not. But those problems become worse when we can't talk about them. And that's the struggle that people with mental illness deal with on a daily basis. The question is, why all the hate towards mental illness? And it's funny because we are all in the disability wagon, and whether we know it or not, because either we struggle with something ourselves or we know somebody. The NIH released a statistic in 2012 that said that approximately 46.3% of young adults, 13 to 18, either have a disability or will develop one in their life. And that means that approximately one in two people will get a disability. Kind of have to watch out, it's like a virus now, it's gonna like <laughs> spread. Um, and, but most importantly, the stigma is damaging because it costs us lives. And I'm not necessarily talking about death. I'm talking about people who are so scared of knowing what other people think about themselves and feeling that kind of unacceptance that they, they hide and they don't contribute the goodness and their strengths to the world because they feel like they're not accepted. I can tell you one thing is that I would have not been able to do anything that I do today as well as be standing here if I did not have that acceptance in my close circle. We need to build an environment where people with different minds are accepted. I want to introduce a model that saves us the mental effort um, because the current model is that we use adjectives to describe people. Whether it be a diagnosis like bipolar disorder, depression, or we can say, oh, that person's weird, something they smell bad, like they're crazy, or, um, and even for other people where that person's annoying, or, and there's just a bunch of adjectives we use to describe people on a daily basis. And the truth is, it has become harmful. Because if you think that you can define someone in a word after understanding what our brain is like and how complex it is, then you can know that that's not an accurate um, depiction of reality. My model defines relationships <laughs> in three factors. Time, proximity, and relatability. Time is the first thing I categorize because how close we feel to someone is often dependent on time, whether it be we the, we the same age. Oftentimes you hear words like generation gap are you think your parents are from a different world 
because they grew up and were exposed to different things, or you think their music taste is awful. That's like one of the examples how time can limit people because depending on what age you are and what era you grew up, you were exposed to different things that shaped your interest. The next one is proximity. It is easier to connect with someone that you see regularly than someone who you don't. And luckily we have Facebook and social media to keep in touch with people from a long distance. But in general, though, it's just a lot easier to just keep in touch with someone if you see them on a regular basis. Relatability. That's how connected we feel to the individual based off of shared experiences, but also similar emotions. Most of our intolerance comes from <coughs> we don't even try getting to know them. We don't even make that effort. We just kind of just go along with what everybody else has been thinking. But I can tell you that that one question will change the world if you incorporate it with anything that you feel adversity towards. Have I made an effort to understand them? And if people, um, if people in high school and middle school and um, elementary school were taught this, it would remove a lot of prejudices and an open environment for all kinds of minds to succeed in. And thank you, everybody.